Good morning. Um, now, today I'm in a very, very special place. This place is called Vala and it is in the south of Norway. And we're here today to talk about long exposure photography using a 10 stop filter. So I'm going to use this wonderful space, this wonderful seascape um, to look at long exposure photography, both with moving water and still water. And we'll go from there. Right, so I'm set up for my first shot. And um, the first thing I've done, if I just come around here for a minute, is I've just put on my circular polarizer. And the first thing I've done is just worked out what light I want this to pick up on, how much reflection um, and, uh, uh, and, 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 and what kind of uh, you know, colors I want to get out from the polarizer. Then, once you've done that, you've got a good reading to go on. Now, I'm gonna use a 10-stop filter. It's a bit overkill, but I'd like some movement in the sky, as well as a perfectly still reflection in this kind of snaking path of the water going over the rocks here. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look at this section here, and we can see that it's a 60th of a second at F8, at ISO 160. I'm purposefully keeping my ISO above 100, and you'll see why. So when I, um, when I work out the exposure for this shot, it's really, really important that the shutter speed isn't too slow, otherwise the overall exposure is going to be super long. So what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to take my camera and come around here. <laughs> Sorry. But a little bit wobbly and um, underneath my camera I'm going to switch it to manual focus if you can just about see here okay now it was already in focus so it should be uh, it should be okay it should be good to go okay um, but I'm just going to check that focus before I do anything else so I'm going to go to the back of the camera and um, we can see here that it's got focus peaking on. So you can see the red areas are now in focus. And you can have a look. I'm just gonna zoom in and just make sure that everything is in perfect focus. Now you can see those lines are red. You can also just visually see that it's in focus. Okay, so we're good to go. So the next part is this. I'm um, just gonna come out of that for a second. I'm gonna slot this filter onto the front of my camera. So if we just come around here, I'll just take you through this bit. So um, the filter goes into this part, uh, which is the closest to the camera itself, and it's got these little seals on the back. So just need to make sure that those seals are completely sealed as it's going in, okay? So I'm gonna push it down into my filter. Sorry, my camera keeps on going out of focus. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to push that down into the filter holder until it reaches the top of the filter holder. And there we go, my 10 stops in place. So the next thing to do is take the shot. So for that, I need to use something slightly different. OK, so for this section of it, I'm going to use my mobile phone and I'm going to use my Big Stopper app. So um, as I'm doing this, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. So um, I've got a 60th of a second on my, on my time. And that means that I can use a relatively fast shutter speed. Now, when I scroll the dial, you can see that a 60th of a second um, with 10 stops uh, on an ND filter comes up as 15 whole seconds. Now that will give me a little bit of movement in the sky, but it won't be too much kind of overkill. I don't need that much at this point because the water is so still, I don't need to kind of um, smooth it out much more than it is already. So 
Let's go for it and see how it looks. So now I've got my um, I've got my camera on manual, so it's on manual focus and set to manual. Now I need to make sure that um, it's still at f8 and one sixtieth of a second, which is here. Oops, um, here and here. And now I need to move my shutter speed so that it goes to. So I'll just brighten up my camera so you can see what I'm doing on the on this camera. So that it goes to one fifteenth of a second. Now that should be then a really good exposure. So let's take it and see what happens. Now before you take it on the tripod, just make sure that you change the release modes from single to two second timer. That way that when you nudge the camera and you take the shot, it doesn't interfere with the taking of the shot and you don't get any um, movement in the camera at all. Okay, so I've set up for my next shot and this is great, I'm loving this. So basically we've got this lovely, I don't know if you can just about see there, if I refocus, this area in front of the camera where the waves are just crashing in. Now, what I'm going to do here, I've set this up, so I've got the same setup with my 10-stop um, filter here. Um, now, when I, um, when I did the timings, it was, um, it was over a 20th of a second. So, in order to do that, what you've got to do is you've got to time it. Um, basically, a camera will do um, up to a 30th of a second, and then after that, you've got to use one of these, so a shutter release. So, I don't know if that's in focus, but anyway. Um, <laughs> So shutter release, and basically the shutter release will help you um, uh, get, that, uh, get that time for as long as you want it to, to go for. So the key here is just to leave that shutter open for enough time. So now we're going to time a minute. All right, let's have a look. So here we've got really, really nice um, detail of the waves crashing in and uh, you can see all that kind of, the, the, the waves have almost turned to kind of mist. But I'm really happy with that shot. Lovely. There's a, there's a really, really kind of smooth curve coming in from the sea, and that is emulated by the smooth rock on the right hand side. Loving that. And those moody, dark skies. Fantastic. Um, I, I don't use it that often, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going um, to put a variable ND filter on as well. So this is a three stop variable ND filter. So it looks something like this. So hopefully you can, uh, you can see this. So it slowly kind of fades from dark to light. Now you've got to be really, really careful with these because obviously it will tint anything in its path. So it's best to do it just when you've got open skies and an open scene like this. Now my camera's <laughs> precariously perched on the edge of the cliff, so you're going to be quite careful. So I'm going to pop this into the second slot and um, when you put the ND filter in, it's really, really important that you take the 10 stopper out. Um, now the reason for this is because you can put the 10 stopper back in again. You must make sure that the variable ND is, uh, is uh, lined up with the horizon. Otherwise you'll get this kind of wonky artificial darkening all over your image. So what I'm doing now is I'm just using the variable ND to really kind of just gain a little bit more contrast in that sky, but I don't really want it on the ground. Now, you can do this kind of stuff in post-processing as well, but sometimes I find when it's the right scene, the right place, 
you just want to bring out that cloud a little bit more. A variable, a variable ND is fantastic. So I'm going to pop that back in. Now, generally, it shouldn't affect the exposure too much. So I'm going to get my, um, I'm going to get my app out again. And uh, I'm going to start, um, I'm just going to get it to 40th of a second. And then I'll start the timer when I'm ready to take my exposure. OK, so I'm just timing this shot um, with the variable ND in it as well. It's on manual. Um, and it's on manual focus as well. I've used focus peaking um, to check that it's definitely in focus. I've also zoomed into it to check that it's in focus. So there's, a, there's quite a lot of faffing around with long exposure photography, but it's really, really worth it because the results you get are unlike anything you can get with a naked eye. So, a few more seconds to go, and then we'll see what we've got. Yeah, so that's just brought down that sky a little bit and added a little bit more drama into it. And the other joy of using a variable ND, if you can, if you can do it right and get it, get it in the right, um, uh, re the, the, the correct exposure at the time, there's almost nothing you need to do in post-processing. You've got that shot right there on the camera. So I'm set up for my next shot, and again, I've got my variable ND in here. Um, and just photographing this beautiful scene here with the waves crashing against the rocks. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is, um, first of all, I've got a minute long exposure. So it's F11, ISO 80 this time, and a minute exposure. What I'm trying to get Again, there's this line of the shore going out into the distance. So let's see how we go with the shot. So long exposure and the wonderful Vala. Um, so it's all about, I mean, it's difficult with long exposure because part of it, you've got to really think how you're recording the scene. Like, are you recording the scene because you want to see the water and you want to see the splashes and the character? And I think if the answer is you really want to see the movement in that water perfectly, then a 10 stop filter isn't the time to use it. If you've got a scene like this where there are loads of contrast and textures, in the rocks and, and in, the, uh, in the surface of the land and lo loads of interesting shapes and you want the sea to work as a backdrop for that, then it's a fantastic um, technique to use because it creates this kind of calm to the sea, it creates a kind of misty, ghost-like element and the 10 stop filter can be really, really creative. Um, against these kind of brooding skies, they're fantastic. Never use them against um, bright sunlight and, and sun because you just get loads of horrible uh, lens flares and it's just nasty. But this kind of weather is absolutely perfect for a 10 stop filter. So please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.